Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting logarithmic equation. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you that this problem is homemade, but I guess anybody can come up with an equation like this. That's fairly easy to do. But anyways, we have log of ln x equals ln of log x. So we have base 10, which is log, and ln is base e, which is the natural logarithm. So we're going to be doing a lot of exponentiation here, so bear with me. Uh, let's go ahead and use one of the most powerful methods in math, which is substitution. So I'm going to set the whole thing equal to y, and don't ask why, you already know, right? So from here we get the following. We get two equations basically, log ln x equals y, and this implies, since our base is 10 here, it's not written, this gives us ln x equals 10 to the power y. Since we are trying to get uh, x in terms of y or y in terms of x, we want to isolate, obviously in this case, we want to isolate x. Uh, we need to do e to the power of both sides. And since the base is e here, this gives us x equals e to the power 10 to the power y. Awesome. So this is our first step. And then the second thing we're going to do is use the second equation. We have ln log x equals y. And by using something similar, uh, the base is e this time on the outside. So we can say that log x is equal to e to the power y. And since the base is 10 here, from here we get x equals 10 to the power e to the power y. Great. So we got two different values for x in terms of y. But that's nice because the reflexive property tells us x equals x, which is really cool, right? Hopefully... That is obvious to everyone. Since x equals x, we can go ahead and set these two values on the right-hand side equal to each other. And then, after doing that, we're going to manipulate that equation by using natural logarithm on both sides. And then uh, we can just uh, hopefully get to y, because our goal is to get to y by itself. So we're trying to solve for y first, and then we can solve for x. So we're going to be using ln. You don't have to use um, natural logarithm here. If you want, you can use log or a different base. That's totally up to you. But anyways, from here, we get that e to the power 10 to the power y is equal to 10 to the power e to the power y. We kind of have like an interesting property with logarithms that says a to the power log bc is the same as um, c to the power log ba or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but I think it was something like this. So we can kind of switch the A and C there, but um, these are not always equal. Okay, so anyways, maybe I, I, I have the wrong version, who knows? Anyways, so let's see how we can simplify this. So to bring down the exponents, I have two exponents here, this one and that one, and I want to bring them down. So let's go ahead and ln both sides. That's kind of like a weird way to say it, but I guess it works. Let's ln both sides. That gives us ln e to the power 10 to the power y equals ln 10 to the power e to the power y. Of course, since these are exponents, we can go ahead and move them to the front. This gives us 10 to the power y times ln e equals e to the power y times ln 10. Awesome. Notice that ln means log with base e. So this is equal to 1. In other words, ln e equals 1. Hopefully you knew that. So we get something simpler. But since I'm trying to solve for y first, it would make sense if we have all the y's on the same side. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by e to the power y. So now we have all the y's on the left-hand side. Why not use properties of exponents and write this with a common exponent like this? And then, obviously, y is in the exponent. So everything else is a constant. 10 over e is a constant. ln 10 is a constant. So we kind of have like something like a to the power y equals b. So in order to solve for y in an equation like this, you either have to use the definition of logs or just um, log both sides. But I'm going to use ln. So let's ln both sides one more time. ln both sides again. Awesome. Let's do it. And if we do, we get ln 10 over e to the power y equals ln ln 10. So it's kind of like double ln. Okay. And the y can be moved. So y times ln 10 over e 
equals ln ln 10. Since we're trying to solve for y, it would only make sense if you divided both sides by ln 10 over e, and that gives us the following, y equals ln ln 10 divided by. Now, notice that uh, this is a quotient, and ln of a quotient basically can be written as a difference of two lns. So we can write that as ln 10 minus ln e, but ln e is just equal to 1. So we can write it like this. Pretty good, right? Well, this is the value for y, but I do need to find x. So let's go ahead and solve for x from here. All right, great. So from now on, we're not necessarily we're not going to ln both sides because we have a lot of lns already, and uh, we're going to do something else. Okay. Anyways, so now I want to set y equal to something. But remember, we have two things for y. Y is either equal to this or that. I want to use the first one. How about that? And if you want, you can use the second one. The values that you obtain are going to be equivalent. But since I'm going to use log of ln x for y, I get this uh, in, in equation. And from here, uh, consider the base is 10. So first of all, I want to solve for ln x. And then I'm going to be solving for x. OK, great. So from here, ln x equals, and I probably need a little bit more room to be able to write that gigantic exponent. So ln x equals 10 to the power ln ln 10 divided by ln 10 minus 1. That expression on the left hand side. Great. So we got ln x, but we want to get x. So why don't we do e to the power both sides? And that's going to give us the value of x because the base is e. If you use the definition, you're going to get e to the power 10 to the power something for x. So x equals e to the power 10 to the power ln ln 10 divided by ln 10 minus 1. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Like, if you plug this in, seriously, it's going to work? Well, you can kind of check it out. I'm not going to because it should work, right? I mean, you can plug it in and test it out. It should work. The equation kind of looks simple, right? But the solution is not uh, that simple looking. But anyways, so here's the idea. You're going to evaluate what ln 10 is with a calculator or otherwise. And then you're going to take the ln again. So it's kind of like the ln of ln 10. And then subtract 1 from ln 10, divide those quantities, 10 to the power of that number, and then whatever that number is, e to the power of that number, so on and so forth. But you get the idea. This is going to be our solution. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the numerical value. And uh, Wolfram Alpha actually gave us a really nice um, graph, which is not provided by Desmos. Because with Desmos, I, when I try to graph this function, and by the way, I tried two different things. I graphed both of these functions, and then I graphed their difference. But it was really hard to see the intersection point on Desmos. That's why I used Wolfram Alpha for the graph. And it's really nice. You can see that our value, uh, the solution to this equation, which was, you know, the ln, ln, ln thing, e to the power 10 to the power ln, ln 10 divided by ln 10 minus 1, happens to be approximately 78.892. And here's the graph. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.